Hi everyone, my name is Shivani Parasnas and I'm a graphic designer and typographer from Mumbai, India. I am a recent MFA graduate from the Maryland Institute College of Art, which is MICA in Baltimore, Maryland. I currently work as a designer at Spotify New York and I'm excited to share my thesis and processes with all of you. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to be talking about my year-long thesis project at MICA called the Extra Bold Italic Type Foundry. So Extra Bold Italic is a fictional type foundry that challenges the binaries in typeface design and typography and looks at non-conventional typeface design approaches that uh, highlight different aspects of Latin typeface design. So a little bit of a background before I dive into my thesis project. Um, I actually studied biotechnology before I came to MICA to study design. So I did three years of undergrad and two years of postgrad. So a total of five years of biotechnology before I realized that I actually enjoy art, design and craft a lot more than science and that is when I decided to come to MICA to pursue an MFA in graphic design. Uh, so that transition was obviously extremely interesting for me and um, I think during that time I learned so many things that are uh, extremely valuable to me even till date. So uh, when I came to MICA to study graphic design, I think the first year was obviously a lot of learning, getting to know things, especially about typography. And during the second year of um, my MFA program is when we started looking at thesis and what we would do uh, for a year um, before we graduate. So uh, looking back at everything I had done in my first year at MICA and before I came to MICA, I think the most uh, natural and organic thing I could think of was um, letters. So um, before I came to MICA, even when I was not a designer, I studied and I learned how to do calligraphy and hand lettering um, since almost sixth grade <clears throat> so it's been nearly 17 years of me doing it so the most um uh, the my first instinct was to sort of take that uh, love for letters and see how could I, how i could expand my skill set and do something new so the core idea of the whole thesis project is rooted in the idea of anti-conventionalism and I think I'll get to it a little more and this idea will become a little more clear as I start sharing more of the things that I did during my thesis. But um, I'm going to start with a little bit of research that went into um, doing my thesis project. So a crucial starting point um, was this excerpt that Ellen sent me by John Berry um, that questions what is the distinction between a serif and a sans serif um, and what is everything between those two extremes like how can we design typefaces that uh, sort of embrace that beauty of the in-betweenness of these two extremes and how would typography look if we actually design using these approaches. Another crucial point for me during the whole time was um, reading The Theory of Type Design by Herard Unger. It is such a brilliant, brilliant book that again highlights the ideas of conventionalism and typeface design and in put in his words, how would typography look if we move away from the core of this galaxy called type design and move further away to explore unconventional approaches to Latin and Indic typeface design. And obviously Femtype was another really beautiful book um, that influenced and pushed me to create what I created during that one year. And looking at the work of these brilliant female type designers designers, graphic designers, artists, I think really pushed me to look at what's been done already and see how I can take that and evolve it and um, sort of work in a direction that has not been explored yet. So when Ellen Lupton and I were talking about how I could actually actualize and realize this idea of typeface design, um, we realized that binaries are literally everywhere. Now, when we think of the word binary, we generally tend to associate it with um, genders. Um, but 
looking at the research we had both done she obviously helped me out quite a bit with pushing me to see what has already been done in this field i think we realized we came to realize that um, binaries do exist everywhere even in typography and that is how we decided to um, kick start my thesis project and started listing out some of these binaries that i noticed everywhere so the first obvious binary that i noticed was there's serif versus sans serif so obviously looking past the obvious binaries was roman and italic uh, what if we pay more attention to the terminals rather than the stems uh, how would typefaces or typography look if the baseline was at the top probably called the top line instead of the baseline how would non standard ideas of uh, stress dictate the design of a typeface and what if we would have shifting anatomy so there are like a lot of different um, criteria that we started listing um but it had to be anything but usual and that was the core idea of this thesis project so i decided to do four typeface proposals and now i call them proposals primarily because one year is obviously not a lot of time to complete four entire typefaces uh type designers obviously work a lot to make sure that typefaces are ready to go and they look perfect and as somebody said to me a typeface is never really done done uh, so i knew that this one year had to be something that i'm utilizing in order to create something that has been that is new and within a skill set that i have never really worked with so there were four typefaces that challenged the ideas of anatomy stress modularity and stability and that is where i sort of began this journey so the first typeface i designed was called naranha um it was um actually an assignment that we had in our type design class in the third semester at mica and we were asked to use a broad nib pen in in a way that would create interesting letter forms so it was the brief was that open ended so simply by holding it at a steeper angle um i created a reverse stressed calligraphic typeface and um it was really really interesting to see how it generated this flirty swishy typeface uh, that looked great at um text oh uh, sorry at display sizes um i managed to create all of these letters without any guidance or background in type design and i think that pushed me to create the other three typefaces that i was uh, designing at the time and for me the applications of the typeface were equally important than the typeface itself um, so setting a tone for the usage of the typeface and figuring out the best environment the typeface would live in was very important to me so i started creating vinyl covers posters and magazine covers using my typefaces and that seemed like a good starting point um to see how my typeface could live in the world looking at different media and softwares was also another really interesting point and i think i enjoyed seeing how my typeface would translate across different forms uh this what you see on the screen is actually a four ink a four color cmyk reso print which i did using my typeface so in order to print what you see on the screen you i would have to pass it through the reso printer four times and it would print each layer one by one on top of each other so the registration making sure the type is legible and clear was very interesting and that whole process i think of going back and forth with digital and analog was what was most rewarding for me so going forward um this ego regular was typeface number 2 this began as an ego clash i had with someone at the time when i was designing this typeface and it seemed like um they were saying that a text face is supposed to be with standard ideas of stress in order to make sure that the legibility and readability is not compromised at all but my point was to see how we could use a reverse stressed typeface as a text face 
and make it comfortable even when you set it in larger bodies of text. So the result was Ego Regular, which is a very subtle um, reverse contrasted typeface uh, with thicker horizontals and thinner vertical strokes. And the because the difference in the stroke width is so subtle, you can actually read larger bodies of text set in this typeface very comfortably. So this was the first typeface that had um, numbers and punctuations and that was a whole different process of for me because I had never really done that before. And again, figuring out the right context and the right environment and setting a good tone for the use of these typefaces was very interesting for me. And to prove my point, I decided to set um, all of the text for my thesis book in Ego Regular. And I think that sort of went back and proved my point that a text face can be reverse stressed while without compromising on legibility and readability at any point of time. More on my thesis book later, so this is just a sneak peek. And what I liked the most about Ego Regular was how beautiful it looked at smaller sizes as well as display sizes. So if you wanted to use Ego Regular at larger sizes outlined, it would still look wonderful. And I think that is what I love the most about Ego. Okay, moving forward. Um, typeface number three was actually inspired a lot by my background in biotechnology. So during those five years um, of studying biotechnology, I worked extensively with fungi um, and just observing a fungus in its habitat was one of my most favorite nerdy geeky things to do. And um, designing a typeface that sort of um, honored my past of being a biotechnologist seemed like a very good idea at the time. Uh, so I actually um, took two extremes of a prickly and a smooth fungus and created um, an interpolating typeface that you could um, sort of go back and forth between and um, a lot of fungi actually interpolate um, between these anatomies in real life. So that was really interesting. Uh, this particular magazine cover was another application that was very, very interesting to look at. I was reading the magazine called Mold at the time and uh, the cover and the type uh, treatment for that was done by um, Eric Hu, whose work I genuinely love and I absolutely look up to him. So. Um, looking at how I could sort of contribute to that existing discourse about identities and evolving identities on magazines and different aspects of um, brand identity was really interesting to me. And I decided to just put my typeface on uh, the cover and I designed a fictional mold magazine issue which um, utilized mold and sort of interpolated between those two forms to see how um, it would look uh, when you use mold for uh, interpolating or changing brand identities. And uh, again, looking at really different applications of pushing the idea of using this typeface not just in stationary but also in motion was um, very, very crucial to my research and my processes. So looking at how I could showcase this typeface in the best way possible was, I think, my favorite part about designing a uh, mold. And letting the user decide at what point do they want to use that typeface, I think, is the most exciting part about variable font technology. And it was obviously very exciting for me also. And a lot of people feel that there are... a a lot of imperfect points between those two extremes which I actually embraced and enjoyed because fungi are not perfect and no two fungi will look the same. So embracing that imperfection in the anatomy of the letter form uh, was uh, actually my favorite bit about this typeface. So yeah, this was bald. And the final typeface that I designed was called Pirouette. Uh, which was based off of um, a signboard that I saw in Jaipur, India. It was a marble in marble inlay work. And my idea for this typeface was to create um, 
two letter sets um, that would randomize and change depending on how you type out a sentence or a headline. So with open type features, um, I'm still working on it, but with open type features, uh, the typeface would randomize which letter form gets typed depending on certain different aspects. <laughs> um, Again, looking back at um, some of the applications of this typeface, um, this was a fictional type for uh, a film poster that I designed for um, Bong Joon Ho and another um, set of um, posters that I designed using my typeface. Again, the same poster in two different contexts, but utilizing um, the same typeface um, in two different variants. And finally, uh, trying to figure out the best way to sort of um, put together this experience of designing these four typefaces was um, a thing to think of. And I think a week before we had our exhibitions planned at MICA, uh, the school decided to close down because of COVID. So I had to make sure that I print a type specimen of sorts that is also a zine. It, ha it had to be something non-binary. It had to stick to the same principles I used for uh, designing the typefaces. So I thought of um, distributing the typefaces to my designer friends and creating a 30-page resoprinted publication that invites these designers to create graphics around literally any theme and idea that they want. So people did not have any constraints in terms of the theme or the subject, but Somehow a lot of them um, ended up creating posters for the zine around cultural, non-cultural and situational backgrounds they were facing at the time. So the result was um, really interesting and what was most interesting at this point was uh, seeing how I sort of just scramble to put this together even though it seemed very chaotic it all happened probably in a week's time so i was extremely grateful and thankful to everybody who contributed to the zine and made sure that it i could print it on time um even though i couldn't really give it to anybody i printed an edition of 30 um uh, zines and this was the result um uh, i think I really enjoyed that idea of curation and uh, giving back to the people who helped me uh, design these typefaces was extremely rewarding. Uh, Elaine Lopez, who was my um, mentor at the time, was kind enough to use my typeface to design a fold-out poster, uh, which was which I then reso printed gold on purple paper, and was included as um, uh, it was included as a fold-out poster with the zine. So I printed an edition of thirty. So there were thirty posters and thirty zines, um, and this is a really nice close-up. Uh, showcasing the details of the typeface pirouette which she used um, for the fold-out poster. And finally, uh, at the end of my thesis, we um, decided to put together everything that we had worked on uh, over that one year's, uh, one year's time uh, into a book, a thesis book. And it was a 150-page publication that um, talked about the processes, research, experiences, and everything that I created during that one year. Um, and it was honestly one of um, the most rewarding things to finally see that and hold that in your hand. There's a quick snapshot of my book. And... I think I would like to end on this note. This was actually a poster that Elaine designed uh, for my zine. And it says, may this crisis dismantle all of our faulty assumptions and force, force us into new terrain. And it's a wonderful quote by Dr. Aisha Ahmed. And I think uh, given everything that we are all going through right now with COVID, lockdowns, and everybody sort of trying to connect online uh, while we all sit at our respective houses is extremely relevant and yeah that is all i have for my thesis 
thank you so much for watching my presentation. I hope you all enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed creating it. I would like to take this moment to thank all my mentors at Mica who helped me actualize this project and Tithe Weekend for giving me an opportunity to present my work to everybody around the world. Stay safe and have a wonderful day.